All right, joining me today is a chemist who, in 1972, wrote The Energy Crisis, which paved the way for the United States Department of Energy. He is now working on body chemistry and athletics. Professor Emeritus at Long Island University, Lawrence Rocks, joins me. Lawrence, great to see you once again. Thank you for having me and on. And we really appreciate you coming in to talk a little bit about the body chemistry of athletics and baseball players. Now, if anybody is a fan of baseball, we have heard Tommy John surgery. In fact, that is something that we're hearing a lot recently. In fact, over the past five years, there have been more than 100 Tommy John surgeries in, in professional baseball players. Um, it's really become a bit of an issue, and it all comes down to the UCL, that ligament. Could you explain the importance of that ligament in the arm? Well, the, all ligaments are stretched by muscles. Then when they're relax, they snap back and, and go back, they creep back to full contraction. It's like a rubber band. You stretch it, release it, it snaps back. That's what delivers the energy. But it doesn't go back completely at first. It creeps back a little bit at the end. It's sort of like the amorphous and crystalline zones in an automobile tire. They work together. In, in protein chemistry, the crystalline zones give the tendon its uh, strength and its uh, sturdiness, but the amorphous zones give it its flexibility. So you stretch it, it snaps back. That gives the athlete the power. Now, if you overstretch it or stretch it and release it and stretch it and release it in rapidity, then you can damage it. Well, the human body has its own way of repairing itself. It does repair itself, but for this ligament, is a surgical solution the only answer? It's the most uh, practical, it's the quickest. You see, it's difficult to study tendons. You have to study them by radioactivity, decay, or amino acid isomerization, left and right form. It's not easy, but the best data shows that the amino acid replacement in tendons is very slow compared to skeletal protein or uh, muscle. How much slower? Maybe a hundred times. So, by a simple analogy, if it takes a season to develop muscles in the gym, it's going to take 10 or 20 seasons to develop your tendons, but they max out. It's a genetic factor. And I think the athletes today are throwing against the gun yeah. and they're overstretching the ligament. Or if they're not overstretching it, they're not giving it enough rest. In fact, this is something that you're working on right now. You're researching a manuscript uh, on the dynamics of chemistry in athletics. So can you tell us some of the things that maybe you found out here? Well, there's a rest question of uh, skeletal muscle, and there are different types, versus uh, tendons. There are some 640 named muscles in the body, and they come in sets, and they work in tandem. And there are just as many ligaments that attach a muscle to a bone. So the problem is, how do you develop your ligament structure at the same time your muscle structure appropriate to the sport you're in? And since ligaments grow very slowly, you have to start young. You need a varied diet, because all diets are, there isn't any one magic diet. Right. Very diet, start young, go slowly. The sport is the main thing. Weight training can be a great help. It can also hurt. Well, that's a big issue right now. And calisthenics can be a great training. They, you can also overstretch. It's a question of degree. Now, the trainers in general know best. But the chemists are trying to tell the athlete what's going on chemically so they can cooperate with the right system. And boy, that's got to be a tough conversation to have with an athlete. You know, they understand muscles, but the, the chemistry of it, I mean, bringing your analytical uh, chemistry back down, background to try to help extend the, the athletic careers. In fact, you, uh, you told the Houston Chronicle muscles are getting too strong for tendons and ligaments. Yeah. So, can players, can baseball players have too much weight training? Oh, anybody can. Okay. And it depends on which set of muscles you're developing. One set can be too strong for another set. And even if you're not injured, your timing is off. And nutrition is something that athletes have been focusing on yes. quite a bit <clears throat> as well. And we've, we've seen so many of these high-protein, low-carb diets out there, which may make you leaner, but do they come at the expense of the flexibility of your ligaments? They may. The body cannot store protein. Uh, in a three-day cycle, excess protein has to be eliminated. 
So if you overload on protein, you're getting really nowhere. You're stressing the body to eliminate it. Mammals store fat. That's okay. how they store energy. And fat stores fat-soluble vitamins. So you're fighting nature. By trying to lose all fat and have only muscle, you're fighting nature. And, and what is the outcome of that? <clears throat> the outcome can be loss of coordination. You can be very strong for whatever it is you're doing in the gym, but that's not a sport. It's not what? baseball, it's not football, it's not hockey, it's not dancing. Well, that's true. But you know, humans have evolved to throw. I feel like that's, you yes. know, that's the one thing that is exclusive to humans. We have the ability to throw better than any other primate, any other animal out there. Yes. Is it, is it becoming something that we are stretching our throwing limitations to, uh, to the red line? It's either over, overthrowing, it's trying to throw too hard, or not resting between efforts, or a combination of both. Okay. But you can't have it both ways. You can stretch a rubber band so far, it'll break. Stretch it repeatedly, it loses elasticity. Well, we're seeing certainly more injuries. Yes. Some pitching coaches believe, some pitching coaches love to watch the radar and they love to watch the pitch count, but some other pitching coaches love the idea of rest, or I should say throwing them more, that they're not getting enough throwing sessions in. Yes. Where do you seem to fall on, on that particular issue? Well, it, I think it's an individual thing. Some players can pitch on three or four days rest. Others need five. They know their own body. Uh, there's a big genetic factor here. Uh, tendons seem to be set genetically at an early age, and no matter how much you exercise past, say, 20, your tendons are not getting bigger. The same way your muscles are. Your muscles can increase 10, 20, 30 percent in mass. The, the tendons don't, and the heart doesn't increase at all. Okay, so if we, we were talking so, earlier, okay, go ahead, please. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, so it depends on the individual player, and he, he's got to have the right coach and the right play. It's a combination. Okay, so we were talking earlier about the, the number of heartbeats that a human has in their yes. lifetime. Is there a number of pitches that a pitcher has in his arm? I don't know. I don't think so. I think it's a question of rest between outings or rest between uh, exertion. Okay. The body can take only so much exertion, then it needs rest. See, an interesting muscle is the heart muscle. It rests between beats completely. The analog to that would be you bench press for one second, rest four seconds, you're totally rested. Now you can do that for 80 years. <laughs> if your that's, skeletal muscles were your heart muscle. That's the kind of stress. That's that not the case. Yeah. So you gotta go with the muscle type. The throwing motion puts stress on the shoulder and the elbow. So it's a question of taking care of your ligaments and your joints. But the emphasis today is on muscle. Right, and it should be on the ligaments. And the joint chemistry, is much of it is carbohydrate, not protein. Well, Professor Emeritus at Long Island University, Lawrence Rocks, I really look forward to this latest manuscript that you, you have coming out. I can't wait to see uh, what you come to, um, and it, it, it sounds like it's going to be very interesting. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Always good to see you. Oh, thanks.